Hi, my name is Talia Nasi, and I'm a senior developer advocate here at AWS Serverless. This video is about getting started with Amazon DynamoDB and AWS Lambda. Amazon DynamoDB is a fully managed no SQL database service running in the AWS cloud. Because it's fully managed, you don't need to spin up server instances, install software, or handle any other basic database maintenance tasks. DynamoDB supports both document and key value data structures. A key value database is a type of non-relational database that uses a simple key value method to store data. Both keys and values can be anything, ranging from simple objects to complex compound objects. A document database is a type of non-relational database that is designed to store and query data as JSON-like documents. DynamoDB handles millions of requests per second while delivering single-digit millisecond latency, and there's automated global replication across three different availability zones. DynamoDB integrates with AWS Identity and Access Management, or IAM, for fine-grained access control for users within your organization. You can assign unique security credentials to each user and control each user's access to services and resources. DynamoDB also integrates with AWS Lambda and other AWS services, fitting into event-driven architecture perfectly. AWS Lambda is a serverless compute service that lets you run code without provisioning or managing servers. All you do is upload your business logic code to Lambda or write code in Lambda's code editor. Then you set up your code to trigger from other AWS resources. Lambda then runs your code only when triggered using only the compute resources needed, and you just pay for the compute time that you use. Lambda transparently supports load balancing, auto-scaling, and handling failures while preserving security isolation and utilization. But Lambda doesn't just sit in a vacuum by itself. It works with other resources to make your applications come to life. Lambda-based applications are composed of three things. First, we have the actual Lambda function. A Lambda function contains your business logic and can be written in one of these six runtimes or your own custom runtime. It's made up of code you've written to react to something that happened. And that something that happened is called an event source. And Lambda functions are triggered by an event source. An event is something that happened. Maybe a file was uploaded to S3. Maybe a DynamoDB table was updated. Maybe something was added to an SQS queue. Maybe a request hit an API endpoint. An event source is what triggers a Lambda function and makes it come to life. Then we have the destination, which answers the question, what do you want this Lambda function to do once it's invoked? Talk to another service, maybe? After the function is invoked, it's going to go and perform whatever it needs to do, update a database record, return something to a client, talk to another API or endpoint that exists somewhere, or maybe send its output to another service. These services can be other AWS services or third parties that are integrated with AWS. Lambda functions are composed of three parts, the handler function, the event objects, and the context object. The handler function is the function that's executed when the Lambda function is invoked. The event object is the JSON object filled with data that is sent to Lambda during function invocation. The context object contains methods that are available to interact with runtime information, such as the request ID or the log group. Lambda can run your functions in response to events from other AWS services, or you can use the Lambda API. The Lambda API is the way that all services interact with your code. All invocations go via the API, regardless of which invocation model is used. Synchronous, asynchronous, or stream-based, which we'll talk about next. You can pass any event payload structure to the Lambda API, depending on the needs of your application. For very large payloads, you can store these in S3 and pay a reference to the S3 object instead. Every SDK includes the Lambda client, making it easy to interact with the Lambda service from your code. Lambda has three execution models, synchronous, asynchronous, and stream. 
In a synchronous model, you have commands. You're telling a service to do something. Go place this order, go do this thing. It's command driven. Lambda is made to execute and returns a response once the code has finished executing. In an asynchronous model, you have events. Events are something that happened that can trigger your Lambda function. Events within your application occur and are observed by services, but only triggers those services which are interested in that particular event. The response is returned upon invocation, and the processing continues in the background. Lastly, we have stream or poll-based architecture. Stream-based is where Lambda reads records from a data stream and invokes your function synchronously with an event that contains stream records. Both DynamoDB and Lambda are event-driven. To understand events and event-driven architecture, let's go through an example. This example is this website that we run that's named after a river in Brazil, and I'm guessing a couple of you have visited this site before. The main objective of this site is to get you to click on the Place Order button. Once you press that button, a bunch of things happen. First, we check your credit card to make sure you can pay. Then we have to get the merchandise off the shelves and onto the trucks, and so on. And that all happens in an Amazon Fulfillment Center. There's no synchronous API call for the Amazon backend to package and ship products. What the front end does after your payment is confirmed is it puts together some information describing the event and puts your account number, credit card info, and what you bought in a packaged event and puts it into the cloud. Later, another piece of software will pull it off and start the packing, shipping, and all of that. The key point about this process is that these things can all run at different rates. Normally, the rate at which people click place order and the rate at which the fulfillment centers can get the boxes out of the doors are roughly equivalent. However, on days like Prime Day, Black Friday, etc., people hit that button immensely faster than the fulfillment center can operate. And that's okay. The back end will work itself through. All of those steps from payment to procurement need to be handled in a performant way under heavy load when you have big sales events. DynamoDB helps provide that consistent low latency data storage. DynamoDB and Lambda are also both serverless. There are four tenants that define serverless as an operational model. Firstly, there is no infrastructure to provision or manage. There's no servers to spin up, operate or patch. There's no physical or virtual container orchestration. Second, serverless applications automatically scale by unit of consumption rather than by server unit. And automatic scaling is a really big win for companies because generally you create multiple MVPs and you don't want to build all of them out for scalability. Also, if you overestimate the number of servers you need, you're basically throwing your money away. And if you underestimate the number of servers you need, then you're going to affect your application's availability. Serverless has a pay for value billing model, which means you only pay for what you use, not for idle time. If you have an idea that's not taking off, some of them can get expensive. And what this means is that you can experiment more. Let's say I have an idea for a new feature and Eric has a competing idea for a new feature. Eric and I can A-B test our features, and regardless of which feature has a higher conversion rate, it's not going to cost much because you only pay for what your customers are using. Lastly, serverless applications have high availability. High availability is really important for production applications because, let's face it, things will break. Unexpected things happen, data centers have outages, there's earthquakes, spaghetti and meatballs can fall from the sky. So what do you do if the servers handling your project fall over? How do you know that all of your versions are in sync with all of the regions? Have no fear, serverless is here, my friends. When you build serverless applications with DynamoDB, you scale seamlessly, have consistent high performance, reduce risk with increased reliability, and avoid the need to re-architect your application as your business grows. This allows you to move faster because operations won't slow you down. You'll also be able to immediately provision massive amounts of capacity without touching a server. You also reduce risk because you won't run out of capacity, and you can protect your data with managed backup and restore. You also reduce application costs because you don't pay for unused capacity. In this video, you learned an introduction to DynamoDB, Lambda, event-driven architecture, and serverless architectures. We also covered the benefits to building serverless applications with DynamoDB. To learn more about serverless, Lambda, and DynamoDB, head to serverlessland.com, where you'll find more content from me and my team. I'm Talia Nasi. Thanks for tuning in.